So I am finally making this video. I'm not really going to do any disclaimers just because I feel like I don't really need to. Um, I mean, if you jump to your own conclusions or put words in my mouth, then that's on you. So I'm not even going to go there. Um, one thing I will say is I'm not going to get into all of the details on the effects of birth control because, first of all, I'm nowhere near qualified or know all of that business and also I would be here forever. So I'm just going to lightly touch on it and spend uh, a couple minutes on just what has been most relevant to me personally. I'm not someone that is coming off birth control because of the terrible side effects that I had on it. It's not like I'm getting off this because I had such bad side effects of birth control and it just didn't work for me. Like if I hadn't educated myself and learned about all these different things of the side effects of birth control, I would still be on it. I am not yet off birth control. I am going off at the end of the month. By the time I'm off, I will have been on birth control for four years and almost four months. So I guess I will just start with the reason why I went on birth control. Basically just turned 18 when I went on birth control and I went on it for regulation of my very irregular cycles. Looking back on what I did kind of document um, for my cycles before I went on birth control, they were insane. Now that I know actually about ovulation, what happens during a woman's cycle and everything, my mind is just blown. I'm like, whoa, what was going on there? Something should have been addressed. Um, so yeah, that's why I went on birth control and it worked. I guess I'll just get into a little bit of what birth control affects in women's bodies. Just to highlight some of the top things, birth control can affect gut health, mental health, liver and gallbladder health, metabolism and thyroid health, imperative nutrient stores, adrenal function, sleep quality and detox pathways, drive PMS and future fertility, energy and mood. Basically birth control puts so many artificial hormones into your body. Like you really need progesterone but the pill is just progestin and it's completely different. One of your key hormones, progesterone, that you get from ovulation, you don't get any of that while on the pill because the pill completely halts ovulation. People that actually know what ovulation does for women's health and just function and bodies should be terrified when they hear that. It completely stops all communication from your brain to your ovaries. And I think one of the scariest parts of this is that mainstream medical world, uh, doctors in medical school uh, aren't even educated on this. What they're taught is more so what happens when a woman's cycle goes wrong and when something goes wrong they're taught to just treat that with contraceptives instead of getting to the root cause of it. Doctors prescribe birth control left and right to women without actually fixing what's wrong inside of them and they just put on this band-aid. It's not helping the problem. Um, it's just masking it so it seems like it might be helping it. In my case, like I had great regular periods which we're not even periods on the pill, they're just withdrawal bleeds because you can only have a true period after you ovulate. The only real side effects that my doctor talked about before putting me on birth control was blood clots, could worsen your acne, um, very rare cases of stroke, and that was pretty much it. So it's either like extreme, extreme, extreme symptoms or else just, you know, some worse acne. It's just like there's so much more than that. So now I'm going to get into my symptoms on birth control. So I guess the first and foremost symptom I want to address is something that happened honestly within the first month of being on birth control and happened for those first three months before I finally decided to go into the doctor and get it addressed. I even talked about this on my channel during that time. If you want to go check it out, it's up there, but if you don't want to watch the whole thing, I am going to insert a couple key clips right now to how I was feeling. What I hate about this is that every single day I can feel the weakness overpower every part of my entire body. It takes energy to breathe. It takes energy to try to stay alert and get feeling into your skull so you don't feel weightless and like you will just waste away into thin air. I'll get these spells. 
I was sitting down and my whole body just felt like it shut down. I've never felt such a weakness and such a weightless feeling like all of my body. It's like I had honestly died but I was still alive. And it scares me so bad because I don't know what's wrong with me. And then I start getting anxious and I can't breathe and I start crying. It happened about four times this summer, those really bad spells. When I take my hand out of my hair from running it through, I would look at it and there would be the biggest, biggest clump of hair in my hand. That summer, as you can see, I was feeling very sick. My cheeks around my jaw were like puffy and swollen. Um, hair loss, which I didn't even remember till I watched that video back uh, like last week. Fatigue, I was anemic, weightless, dizzy, hard to breathe. So I went in and got my blood work done and they found out that I was hypothyroid and they did autoimmune tests including Hashimoto's and I did not have any of that. And so I was in the like 10% or less group of people whose hypothyroidism was not due to autoimmune disease. And so I'm the kind of person that wants to know why. Why is this happening? And the doctor said, I don't know. I remember just researching all the other different things that could be doing it. I thought then I had a pituitary gland tumor. I thought this and that. It's just like going down all the possible lists and reasons. So I went to then an endocrinologist and he did further blood tests. And I asked him why. Why do I have this? What is up with my thyroid? Oh, we don't know. And I remember asking specifically. I didn't know anything about what I know now about birth control back then. But I just remember asking, could this have anything to do with the birth control pills? Could they be correlated at all to my thyroid? And he said no. Only recently have I connected my thyroid health back then to being on birth control. It's mind blowing to me. I remember that time in my life when I felt so sick and I didn't know why. That was one of the hardest parts is that no one could tell me why. Now I know what detrimental effects that birth control can have on thyroid health. Birth control depletes selenium, zinc, and B vitamins. Selenium and zinc are needed to produce thyroid hormones and to convert it to its active form, T3. Zinc is also needed for the communication between thyroid hormone and cell receptors. And then B vitamins are needed to synthesize the thyroid hormone. So by the birth control pill depleting selenium, zinc, and B vitamins, what happens is that this interferes with the synthesis of the thyroid hormone. It interferes with the conversion from its inactive form to its active form, essentially T4 to T3. Um, it interferes with the use of thyroid hormone at the cellular level. So essentially what this means is that you are therefore making less thyroid, you are converting less thyroid, and using less thyroid hormones. And so what they did to address my hypothyroidism is they prescribed me medication. I believe it was lethothyroxine, something like that. Um, and that they said I would probably have to be on it the rest of my life because they thought that I would have this thyroid condition the rest of my life. And I don't remember how long I took it. It was maybe six months. I don't, I don't know. It wasn't too terribly long though. Um, and I was able to get off of it because my blood work kept showing up good. So I don't know if my body just like leveled out at a certain amount of time, but I'm not on thyroid medication anymore. I haven't been for a long time. Um, so I don't know if my body just kind of needed that jump start to recover from what the pill did to me. I don't know. So I'm just going to go down the list of some other side effects that have kind of accumulated over the past four years. I mean, I'm not saying that every single symptom that I'm listing to you is 100% sure, like, from birth control, but I mean, if the shoe fits. The next one is dry eyes, ocular migraines, I've had two to three times. Partial blindness was 
the biggest and scariest symptom of my ocular migraines. Their symptom is acne on my chin and jaw. So before I went on birth control, I did have pretty bad acne, but it was more so just the tiny little acne everywhere on my face. But um, since going on birth control, I have pretty bad hormonal acne just on my chin and jaw, this whole area. And most of this is hyperpigmentation. My poor chin has been going through this for four years, over and over and over again. Really deep, painful hormonal acne that my skin just keeps trying to heal and it just can't because it keeps going through the same thing over and over. Um, yeah, nothing has really helped it. So, slow metabolism that I've noticed. Um, extreme heat sensitivity. I have no idea what that's linked to, <laughs> but in the past like couple years or so, I am so sensitive to heat, like drinking tea in a hot room, coming into a hot room from being outside, all of that, I can't handle it, like I'm so hot. Dizzy eyes at night, it like wakes me up actually, and my eyes are dizzy, my eyes are doing like this, and like I need to focus my eyes on like a word or reading or something. What's really annoying is that I can't close my eyes when this is happening because it'll make me like swim out into oblivion. It me up for however long it decides to keep going because I literally can't close my eyes until it's done. I have been awake before for like four hours as this is happening. It might happen like five to six times, maybe seven. Bloating and IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. Um, I feel like the pill is definitely taking a toll on my gut. I'm gonna get into supplements, my protocol. So I'm doing a supplement protocol that is gonna prepare my body to go off the pill um, and kind of reduce the chances of me experiencing post birth control syndrome. This isn't the only source of my information on this topic, but it is one that I really, really like. So basically I took the protocol that's in the book and modified it for myself. Um, so basically what my protocol was, was no gluten, dairy, or sugar. Grains are okay if gluten-free for things that are in like gluten-free bread or oats or tortilla chips. And I didn't stay completely away from processed stuff, um, but I tried to make sure they were clean processed stuff. It also followed the no gluten, no dairy, and no sugar. So I did the flat full protocol for 30 days no gluten, no dairy, no sugar, and then I reintroduced dairy. Had no symptoms with, with dairy, which I'm really happy about. Last week, I reintroduced gluten, and I did have food sensitivities with that, which is annoying. Basically, the point of this protocol, like I said, is to prepare your body for going off the pill. Basically, to reduce inflammation, kind of reset your gut, and your whole digestive tract, your liver, um, really giving your body clean food that it that it really needs to thrive. Um, the big thing is inflammation. Pill promotes inflammation to begin with, and then if you're eating a not great diet with all those inflammatory foods, it's even a worse no-no. Like I said, I did modify it for myself while keeping to me what was the most important thing still in there. For my detox, the first 14 days of the protocol, I just did like a yogi detox tea because I cannot afford the detox stuff that's in that book or even our supplements, even though I'm sure they're great, but that's kind of where my protocol and preparation has been at for preparing to get off the pill. I have about a week left on birth control, actually. I have just one row left. So what I'm doing here on out is keeping up all the healthy foods. Okay, so my battery just died in my camera, so I'm filming on my phone. I think I'll put recommendations down in the description box. I think the next video that I'll do on this topic is my one month update off birth control that I'm already so excited for. I'm also really nervous, like this is not an easy decision, but it's a very empowering and liberating one though, so I'm very excited just to finally be free of it and just finally start healing my body and letting it actually function and actually feeling the healthy effects from a healthy body like as a women that we're supposed to I feel like birth control robs so so many aspects 
of your body that makes you you and a woman so yeah with that being said i will see you in my next video whatever that may be